We're gonna make a lab about configuring policy based redirect to layer 4 through layer 7 service node. Cisco ACI provides the capability to insert layer 4 through layer 7 functions using an approach that is called service graph. It can be considered as a superset of service insertion. The layer 4 to layer 7 service insertion feature enables you to insert one or more services between endpoint groups. Examples of layer 4 through layer 7 services include, but are not limited to the firewall, load balancing, SSL offloading, and application acceleration. EPIC allocates the fabric resources to VLANs to full services and programs the fabrics to leave switches as per configuration that is specified in the service graph. Layer 4 through layer 7 services can be physically located anywhere in the fabric and they can run as physical appliances or as a virtual appliances. So one of the most powerful features of ACI layer 4 layer 7 search graph is policy-based redirect PBR where I can bend the traffic against the endpoints of our route table to force the traffic between two EPGs to go through the service devices. A physical view is right here showing you I will deploy the ASAV as service, as firewall services in the Cisco ACI fabric, and I will use the policy based redirect PBR to bend the traffic from DB EPG to app EPG to go through the Cisco ASAV as showing you in this uh, diagram. The Cisco ACI will configure the VLANs to on the switch interfaces and connect it to the ASV along with required redirection rules on the leave switches. Cisco ACI will not touch the ASA configuration as uh, not its management scope. So look at this uh, logic view traffic between the DB VM to the app VM would be normally routed by the Cisco ACI without ACI service graph because the ACI is the default gateway. And I will use ACI service graph PBR to selectively force the traffic to go through Cisco ASAV. So the most methods of integrating layer 4, layer 7 virtual appliances with Cisco ACI is based on the VAM domain integration. Although I could connect the ASAV to fabric using the static pass bonding as a virtual machine VM standard vSwitches, I will migrate the vSphere network to the AB Pick Manager the VDS. In the VCR web client, go to Networking, Expand the Data Center, DC, and the VDS verify the VDS configuration with uh, the ports, port groups. Three port groups have been uh, pushed to uh, by the APEC. And the hosts have been added to the, AC, uh, the DVD switches in each of the uh, poor group have assigned the virtual machines to the uh, EPGs that were all poor groups in the virtual um, V center. The 192.168.20.0 is uh, assigned with all the app servers, and 192.168.21.0 is having all the web servers. 22 zero is having all the DB servers. Go back to my APIC under the fabric and access policies. I can verify the interfaces one slash four one slash five are all configured and assign the policy group yes as I host the VDS. With all that I have a VLAN pool to uh, give the other dynamic allocation 1500. Without worry about my physical connections when go to tenant, I have a tenant create called decrout. And this tenant 
What I have is the application profiles. The profile is getting three EPGs connected. Go on to the topology, you can see they have an ending to ending connection contract. So the EPGs are connecting each other, also the virtual machines. As for now, the tw uh, 22 .0 for the DB VMs, the EPG has no problem connecting to the app 20.0. 22.0 is the providing a contract ending to ending, and also the app. EPG is consumer at. We have a the virtual machine VM and domain associated to our uh, EPGs. Right here, you can check the domains. Now, I'm about to create the layer 4, layer 7 device, Cisco APIC one only allocates network resources and programmed VLANs on the fabric size. The Cisco ASA VVM has already been configured for basic firewall functionality. Based on configuring layer 4, layer 7 device, I will check the initial state of ASA V virtual machine. So interface IV brief will configure the interface G00 as the same subnet for the bridge uh, for the DB VM bridge domain. And gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 is configured to 20.254 is the same subnet of app EPG. Show run gigabit Ethernet 00. zero. I can see is the external interface security level zero, and it has the IP configure on it. Gigabit zero one is also configured, and the security level is fifty, and it has the same IP range IP twenty dot two five four configured as the same as the app EPG bridge domain. Now to show you the access list, I have permits that all access to permit all extenders to permit IP any any and to show you access group permit all interface interf internal interface. So now the traffic is all permitted between DB EPG and app EPG. They're just sitting for the separate IP addresses. I'll show you IP interface brief again. So now I'll go back to my APIC. In the Centennial, I'll go to Services, L4L7 Device. Right click the menu, I'm going to choose Create the L4L7 Devices. The name of the device, I will say a Firewall. The Firewall is right here. I'll put Virtual. In the device area, let's click the plus sign into the name of concrete device. Fiber concrete. Choose my fiber virtual machine. Click next. Let's click the plus sign for the interface. Interface 1, I would say concrete DB interface. Um, use the network adapter 2. Add one more. Click update and add one more. Concrete app interface. Choose Network adapter 3 update and then let's click OK. Cluster interface. I'll add a plus sign 
in the cluster interface area to add two cluster interface. With first interface, we're going to say DB interface. Pick the one I already created for DB interface. Click update. Add one more. That is the app interface. Pick the app interface. Click update. Click submit. The next thing is configure PBR policies. PBR policies define the next hop of the traffic that will be sent through the layer 4, layer 7 device. Although you could define the PBR policies while applying service graph templates, you will rather configure the policies separately than rather than when applying the template. On the Cisco ASAV, we'll obtain the IP and MAC addresses to of gigabit 0 slash 0 and gigabit 0 slash 1. So log on to my ASA and we'll show interface gigabit 00, 0 and note down the MAC address and go to the gigabit 0 slash 1 and we'll note down to my MAC address too and IP address. So go back to the APEC within the tenant and we'll go to the policies on the protocol. I'm going to right click the L4 L7 policy based redirect and we'll choose create L4 L7 policy based redirect. Let's create the policy name with the BDPBR. DB. PBR. With all the default setting, click the plus sign in the layer 3 destination. We we'll first enter the IP and the MAC address of ASA gigabit 0 slash 1. And click OK. Then let's create another policy named app we'll make it as app pbr keep everything defaults and we're we'll pushing the ip type in the mac address click ok submit now talk about a qu creating service graph a service graph allow you to insert the a layer 4 layer 7 device in the traffic path between the epgs it uses a variation of concept of a contract the insert is the layer 4 layer 7 device can offer functions such as traffic filtering traffic load balancing and ssl offloading you will deploy a service graph with a pbr that enables the DB to app traffic flow through the Cisco ASA V. Although the DB virtual machine and app virtual machine have default gateways set to the ACI pervasive gateways, they are the 192, 168.21, 22.1, and for app virtual machines, default gateways 192, 168.20.1. That's the ASA IP for DBVM and ASA IP 192.168.20.254. That's the ASA IP for the app VM. Within my tenant, within the tenant, and let's go to the service layer 4, layer 7. And we'll create the service graph template. Enter the template name, well, firewall SGT, and then drag and drop the device cluster, the firewall in between the EPGs. Graph type, new graph. Features app the first node will allow all firewall will be routed. Click route redirect. 
examine my service graph template and its several elements, the function nodes and one. And let's click submit. On the service graph template, choose the policy type. Then let's examine the terminal nodes and the connections. Let's right click the my service graph template and we're going to choose apply L4 L7 service graph template. In the contract settings, enter information and we'll click next. Information for consumer EPG. And point group type first, we'll choose the EPG. And we do not provide the intra EPG contract. We'll leave the checkbox cleared. Consumer EPG. Here we're gonna pick is the DB EPG, which is D22. Provide the EPG, we're gonna to make it is the app EPG, which is D20. In the contract type, we'll choose new contract and contract name will make is firewall contract. I'll make sure that the no future option is checked to allow traffic to the L4, L7 device. Click the next. In the graph setting, let's clear L3 destination, VIP. Checkbox for the consumer and provider connectors. Do I choose respect to PBR policies and the cost interface, consumer connector, the DB interface. And the provider connector, app interface. And click finish. Clear the VIP for the provider also. Choose the redirect policy. Click finished. Let's go to service L4, L7, deploy the graph instance. Here we can uh, see the deploy the graph instance and it will get examined to the function node. Now let's go to service. Device selected selection policies. We can check the logical device and the logical interface consumer and provider. Let's go to application profile. We'll check the DB EPG under contract. We find a contract to be applied for DB that's consumed. And go to my app. Contracts are also providers as, as a provider. Hey everyone, NetMaven here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to dive into the world of amazing network technologies with me. And please feel free to leave your comments below. Hey everyone, NetMaven here. Don't forget